Welcome back, Panthers, to another episode of Ned News. Sorry we missed you last week. I'm Bob, joining Miles at the news desk. It's Wednesday, October 8th, and there's a lot of news we need to share with you. It's homecoming week, and everybody is getting excited for more upcoming events and the weekend dance. We hope you've been having fun. And there's more fun stuff on the horizon. Today was American Day, and tomorrow is Classy Day. So bust out your suit and tie, or maybe that prom dress from last year. I'm so fancy. Uh, we already know. Friday is Decade Day, so freshmen, channel your inner Backstreet Boys and baggy jeans for the 90s. Sophomores, whether you like heavy metal or disco, get into it and show your groove. Juniors, you're representing the 60s, so bust out your tie-dyes or just dress like the average Netherland citizen. Seniors, let's go back to the future and represent the 1980s. Grab your neon pants and hairspray and do it right. And middle-level students, don't think we forgot about you. Make sure you get your leather jackets, bobby socks, and poodle skirts all set. And look like Leave It to Beaver. And leave it to Bob for some more news about homecoming. Friday will be an action-packed day, starting with the afternoon pep rally. Make sure to bring your loud voices and energy to the gym and to the field. The Student Council has a super fun pep rally planned for the afternoon, which will be followed by the annual Powder Puff football game. It's often chilly on Powder Puff Friday, so remember your winter coat. And don't forget the ever-popular cheerleading extravaganza at halftime. Which is usually as entertaining as the game. Talk to your class officers about getting involved with float building. The annual homecoming parade will take everyone back in time during halftime of the football game on Saturday, and you'll want your class to have the best float. Kickoff for the game against Longmont Christian is set for 1 p.m., and the parade will roll around around 2. Tickets to the homecoming dance will be on sale for $5 a person at the door. The dance will run from 8 to 10. <laughs> That's cheap, even for me. Does Bob have a date? Well, I was a little nervous, but here it goes. I thought you never ask! That was special. Girls Volleyball hosts Denver Christian Thursday at 5 p.m. Let's pack the gym and cheer the girls on to victory. The girls played awesome early this week with JV grabbing a victory on Monday and the varsity on Tuesday. Keep up the strong work, girls, and we'll all be there tomorrow to cheer you on to a homecoming win. Let's change the sum check from homecoming for a bit and move on to some other news. Cool. Art club meets today at 3.30 in Miss Bagby's room. And bike club meets right after school tomorrow. All team sports will have their picture day coming up on Friday, so don't be the one who forgets your uniform. Your books are on sale right now, and you can still buy one for the discount price. See Ms. Petrovich for a high school yearbook or Ms. Simkin for middle level. The price will increase starting next week, so don't delay. The end of the quarter is coming up next week, Friday the 17th of October. And you know what happens after that, right? Yep, Halloween. I mean, I was kind of talking about the parent-teacher conferences. Oh yeah, but I'm not a parent. But you do have parent smiles. And I'm sure they'll want to know all about your progress and behaviors so far this year. Okay. I'll be sure to finish strong or reach for excellence in the classroom this last week and a half. Conferences will happen on consecutive Thursdays coming up Octo October 6th, 30th and again on November 6th, both from 3.30 to 7.30. So make your parents proud. Another way to impress your parents is by going to college. Or at least talking about the possibility. Any senior who would like college application help should talk to Ali Shambo. She'll be in the library each Tuesday and Thursday from 3.30 to 4.15 to provide application help. So, if you need a hand with common apps, Naviance, essays, or anything else college-related, stop in on Tuesday or Thursday to see Shambo. Attention thespians. Get your Thescon packet and permission slips back to Miss Evans today. And thanks for the cookies last week with all your choir kids out there. Oh, those are so good. I'm still gorging on cookie dough. Well, that wraps up our important news and announcements for this week. It's time to send it over to the sports desk and see what the girls are up to. Take it away, ladies. Thanks, guys. Brian and I are all set with your weekly sports update. The cross-country teams competed well again last week at the Mile High League Championships, <clears throat> and the girls took home the third-place trophy, which is awesome. Sophie Lindenberger came in ninth overall, with Sarah Davison and Mackenzie Renat following close on her heels in 13th and 17th place. The boys also showed their stuff, finishing in 6th place. The boys were led by James McNamara and Mike Arola, who took home 6th and 8th place as individuals. Way to go, runners! The cross-country teams will have a week off from competition as they train for the regional meet next week, where several Panther runners look to solidify their hopes of running in the late October state championships. The Fire State Girls Volleyball Team <coughs> would like to congratulate our middle-level volleyball team. The team has 15 young Panthers on the court this fall and are looking like future stars. Someday you'll be playing in front of a homecoming crowd like we will tomorrow. Yeah, don't forget, Varsity Volleyball takes the court Thursday at 5 p.m. We hope you all can make it out to root for the Panthers. 
And then next week, it's our big rivalry game at Gilpin. They may have beaten us in football this year, but we'll be taking those bragging rights back. And now we'd like to give you a Netherlands alumni update we thought was pretty cool. Last week, 2010 grad Stuart Williams was named Wyoming Football Player of the Game and Mountain West Conference Player of the Week for his big day versus Florida Atlantic. Stu kicked a 50-yard field goal and then chipped in a short one for the 21-20 win as time elapsed. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Shows that Ned kids can do anything if you work hard and put your mind to it. And speaking of football, the Panthers got back on the winning track last week when they squared off against Justice High School. Netherland jumped out of a 28-0 first quarter lead before giving up two late scores before the half ended. The final score was 42-20 and the boys were excited to begin what hopes to be an October winning streak. They are now 3-3 three and three on the season. Senior running backs <coughs> Jaron Dillon and Noah Ridnell both ran for over 100 yards and each scored a touchdown on the way to a Panther victory. Sophomore Trick Campbell also scored on a 60-yard interception return, and QB Kellen Sekira stepped in for the injured Michael Wood to go 1-0 as a starting quarterback. Let's go to a couple highlights of the action. Trick Campbell on the interception. Dodging and weaving for a 60-yard touchdown to the celebration of his teammates on the sideline. And Quinn Kutchenmeister showing off some nifty moves on a reverse for a touchdown. And Kellen Secure to Ike Thibodeau on the 12 yard touchdown pass. forward to the homecoming game even more now. And winter sports will begin next month for high school students. Start thinking about which sport you want to join. There's basketball for boys and girls and skiing as well, both downhill and north. See Mr. Taylor or just sign up online. Your school and your teammates really need you, so give it a try. So that's about it for sports again this week. We all hope to see you either on the field or in the stands this week for the big homecoming games. For Bob, Miles, Bree, and myself, thanks for watching Ned News. Goodbye for now. We'll see you next time. Go Panthers! Good kick. Woo! Yeah, go Panthers! Get so better! Woo! Woo!